our universe seems to be defined by a set of numbers which in some sense look special. If we had different numbers, we would end up with a sterile universe. People react to this seeming coincidence in a number of ways. You could say it's the outcome of some kind of design or providence. We could say it's a brute fact we have to accept because these numbers might be determined by some theory which we haven't yet discovered. For a while it was possible to believe that the laws of nature were not so precisely set as to require the hand of a creator. But then a completely new fundamental property of the universe was discovered. An anti-gravity force present in space itself. It is called the cosmological constant. And when cosmologists calculated its effect on the evolution of the universe, they realized it had to be very finely tuned indeed. The fine tunings, how fine, how fine tuned are they? Most of them are 1% sort of things. In other words, if a thing is 1% uh, different, uh, everything is bad. And a physicist could say, maybe those are just luck. On the other hand, this cosmological constant is tuned to one part and 10 to the 120, 120 decimal places. Nobody thinks that's accidental. That is not a reasonable idea, that something is tuned to 120 decimal places just by accident. That's the most extreme example of fine-tuning. No force in the history of cosmology has ever been discovered to be that finely tuned. The cosmological constant needs to be set to one part in a trillion, 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 trillion. Otherwise the universe would be so drastically different that it would be impossible for us to evolve. That the cosmological constant arrived at such a tiny value by chance seemed to be out of the question. But the alternative explanation was also impossible to contemplate. Physicists uh, did not want to accept the idea that the laws of nature might be controlled by, uh, by well, the benevolence of nature. There should be no reason why the luck should just have it that we can exist. It's too much, it's, it's a stretch, it's much too far to stretch. It seemed that hidden in the laws of nature was a value so precise that it was impossible to deny that our universe was designed. But a designed universe requires the existence of a designer, a notion that even the anthropic scientists did not want to entertain. If the universe, if the constants of the universe are indeed fine-tuned, how do we explain it? How do we explain the appearance that the universe is tuned to bring us into existence? Well, theists say God did it. Uh, God tuned, God twiddled the knobs and tuned the physical constants to have exactly the right values. That, of course, is no explanation at all because it leaves unexplained the tuner. It's just pushing the, the problem back one step. So we can instantly discount explanation number one. Explanation number two is adopted by physicists, I think Steven Weinberg, who was quoted earlier in this conference, uh, Stephen Weinberg, <coughs> Nobel Prize winning physicist from Texas, um, I think his view is that we don't yet understand enough physics, and when we do, when we have the longed for theory of everything, the TOE, we will then realize that these knobs are not for tuning. There is no freedom, there are no degrees of freedom. Uh, there's only one way for a universe to be.
um, having accepted the, the word of physicists that there is a, an element of fine-tuning, and I've tried to lay out three possible explanations. One, one would be God, which, as I've said, isn't an explanation at all. One would be um, the um, multiverse, and then anthropically with hindsight saying we have to be sitting in one of the universes right. that could give us. But the third one, which I've attributed to you, oh, no. possibly wrongly, oh, no. uh, would be um, I, what I call the macho physicists, who say, well, uh, it's just that we don't understand um, uh, why these things that are the other way they are. One day we will, uh, it, when, when we have a theory of everything, it, it will be understood. But it sounds from our conversation as though that I, I misrepresented you there. I don't think one should underestimate uh, the fix we're in that in the end we will not be able to explain uh, the world, that uh, we will have some laws of, some set of laws of nature, we will not be able to derive them on the ground simply of mathematical consistency because we can already think of mathematically consistent laws that don't describe the world as we know it and we will always be left with a um, question why are the laws of nature what they are rather than some other laws and uh, I, I don't see any way out of that. The fact that the constants of nature are suitable for life, which is clearly true, we observe, um, the final idea, which I think probably most physicists um, at least have some time for, is the multiverse theory. No one has constructed a theory in which that's true. I mean, it's not only a speculation. The theory would be speculative, but we don't have a theory in which that speculation is mathematically realized. Right. Yeah. So it, but it's a possibility. And the fact that the cancellation is so precise means that the number of universes in the multiverse you need to postulate in order to anthropically mm -hmm. be comfortable with it is very, very large. And it must be at least 10 to the 56, or, yes, or in fact, exactly. uh, yeah. if you think you have some idea about fluctuations at even shorter distances, I think you would say at least 10 to the 120. Uh, in fact, that, that's a little disturbing.